Hello everybody, Mac here. Welcome back to the show. So apparently it has become exclusives week here on the channel because the other day we just looked at the Valiverse exclusive Bone Collector 2 card and link right here. And today we are looking at the Joe Fest and then later Big Bad Toy Store exclusive Fresh Monkey Fiction and Big Bad Workshop Operation Monster Force Blood Prince Dracula and the Omen of Doom Forgotten King. And I am very excited about getting these. These are obviously just translucent versions of figures that we know are coming for the Monster Force. These were faster to get out, easier to get out because there was no worry about paint apps. You just molded it in translucent plastic, shipped it out. You can also see they did not waste any funding at all on the packaging. For both of them, all we have is basically a plastic bag with a uh, cardboard tag stapled to the top. I do like that on the Blood Prince Dracula, we have a picture of Castle Dracula. And then here for the Forgotten King, we have the um, pyramids. I don't know if that's supposed to be the, the Pyramid of Giza, but we have the pyramid here, which is presumably where the Forgotten King came from. I am really excited about these for a couple of reasons. One, it's just really cool to get a preview of Monster Force in our hands because I am really looking forward to the Monster Force line. As a matter of fact, I'm looking forward to a lot of stuff that Fresh Monkey Fiction is doing uh, lately because we have Monster Force, we have the Order of the Crimson Moon coming out, and then we have a third um, series coming out that I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's basically just like a line of troop building figures. I'm sure you all saw it, you know what I'm talking about, I just can't remember what it's called right now. The reason I am excited about Monster Force, and this brings me to the main point for me, is that if you've watched the channel, especially around Halloween, then you know I love monsters, especially the classics like Dracula right here. As a matter of fact, part of me was debating on whether or not I was going to save these to open up for Bricktober for Halloween, but no, that's too far off and I really want to get these open, I want to take a look at them, and I want to get an idea of what we can expect from Monster Force. And I'm sure you all do as well. So I was really, really happy to get these already. I was surprised at how fast they came, to be completely honest. And these make great convention exclusives. These were unveiled, I think, at Joe Fest, and then basically what they had left over was sold at Big Bad Toy Store, Big Bad Workshop right there, and they're sold out right now. I'll put links in the description below if you still want to check out the uh, landing pages for them, but I don't think this is going to be one of those deals where they'll make a second run of these. These were convention exclusives. They were easy and fast to get out because they didn't have to worry about paint apps. All they did was mold everything in translucent plastic, ship them over, got them to the convention, got them to Big Bad Toy Store. I don't believe there's going to be a second wave of these. I would be very surprised if that happened. And the Blood Prince Dracula, of course, we have molded all in red translucent plastic, looking like a giant Jolly Rancher. And then we have the Forgotten King right here, molded in a blue, icy blue translucent plastic, which I'm digging this because I could see using this as actual part of the line. Because what we've seen on the Forgotten King that's coming out, the standard one, he does have translucent blue hands with magic effects that you can swap out for the when he's casting spells when he's using the magic. It's conceivable that you could use this for like, you know, when the Forgotten King basically goes Super Saiyan and he just magics himself up completely. So I kind of dig that this one can actually be used in the line, whereas this, this is just cool to have. I mean, come on, a red Dracula. And this is why I love Monster Force, man. Like I said, I love those, mon those classic monsters. I love the Universal Monsters. I, I have the um, the Jada Toys uh, defunct Universal line. All we needed was the mummy, man. Um, so I was really excited to be getting Dracula here. And I know this isn't the Universal Monsters, but Dracula's Dracula. Come on, I even have that armored Dracula on pre-order from uh, the Marvel Legends line. It's just vampires, Draculas, I got to get them. I got to get them. So I'm really looking forward to opening this one up and taking a look, but this one I think is the one that I am excited about the most. It looks like he has the most accessories. He has a unique design. This is a new character, so this is probably the one that we're going to be opening up second, and we'll take a look at Dracula first 
and you can see basically all of their accessories are just thrown into the bag right here. Like I said, didn't waste any money on packaging, just wanted to get them for the convention, and I can respect that. These make great convention exclusives. So without further ado, let's get these open and let's take a look at Big Bad Workshop and Fresh Monkey Fiction Operation Monster Force 2024 Joe Fest exclusives Blood Prince Dracula and Omen of Doom Forgotten King. Okay, here he is, our Blood Prince Dracula, or Vlad if you've known him as long as I have, out of his packaging and putting the tape measure to him, we can see that he is six and a quarter inches tall to the top of his head. So with him being this complete Jolly Rancher red translucent, I don't know how well he's going to show up on camera after all the editing and everything. I'm not even sure how well the detail on his face sculpt is going to come out on camera. But I do like it. I like the beard. I like this long mane of hair that they have going back. For the eyes, they just gave him a pair of black dots just so that the eyes stand out. You can't really see a great amount of detail in the face, but you can see some detail in his clothing, in his garb right here, especially where like the ascot is at, the um, double-breasted vest that he has, this long coat, which is actually a very gummy um, plastic. I was kind of surprised by that of how soft it is. Now, the coat is glued to the front of his vest right here. As a matter of fact, the vest isn't much except for this piece and a neck piece that goes around the neck of Vlad here. And the coat pretty much covers up everything else. The reason I know this is because they didn't use a lot of glue on the sides to hold the coat to the vest that in the little bit that I've been playing around with him since I got him out of the packaging, I kind of peeled all of the glue away by accident from this side. Like you can feel a little bit of roughness where the glue was at, especially at this point right here where there is a very slight peg hole and a very slight peg here in the coat. And when you move that, you can see that he has a buck that's actually very similar to the Valivor Valiverse Action Force figures. That there's a ball joint here at the waist and there's like an orbital ab crunch uh, right here at the midsection. So like I said, very similar to the uh, Action Force figures. And you can also see that there's not much to this piece. It's kind of like a dicky, basically, that it covers his front and it's held in place by the neck right there. So we're just gonna put this back because I don't wanna play around with it too much. I don't know how well or if I'm even going to try to re-glue this side because this side has started to peel off a little bit too but I'm worried that if I use too much glue or the wrong kind of glue, it's just going to glob on there. And then you're just gonna have like this ugly splotch on this translucent red. So I may just let this hang and not worry so much about that. As far as the detail goes, there's not much going on here in the legs. These would just be regular trousers. You can kind of see the outline of what I'm assuming is going to be a pocket once we have some paint apps on here. And the boots are also very plain as well, giving the impression that they were just like some suede leather boots going on right here. Now, some of these joints, before we get to the articulation, some of these joints are very loose. And I don't know if that is the figure itself or if that's just a byproduct of the translucent plastic. Translucent plastic, as I'm sure most of you know, can be kind of tricky sometimes, can be a little finicky. I don't have a lot of translucent figures. For the most part, translucent figures never really did anything for me, but these two, um, Dracula here and the Forgotten King, I really wanted to get my hands on these. Um, yeah, so... That's really all. I do like how it's sort of like cinched in at the waist right here, and you can see the belt across the back, the, the, the ripples, the texture in his coat right here. He does have like the peg hole in back like most figures do. Like it's hard to see a lot of the detail because first of all, I have a feeling that this is actually just like a very smooth suit. We've seen the pictures on Big Bad Toy Store that it's really just like Dracula in a suit sort of. 
So let's take a look at something that we can see, and that is the articulation, that his head will do a full 360 spin, even with that big mane of hair. It does interfere with him being able to look up, though. He can look down fairly well, and there is some decent amount of tilt side to side. The arms will do a full 360 spin. We can bring them up a little bit past 90. There is a butterfly joint in here. You don't get as much forward as you do back. He has a bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows that are a little tacky. They don't crunch all the way, but there's still some really good travel in them right there. Wrists will swivel and wrists hinge. This one hinges. Yeah, these ones hinge in and out, which is kind of a bummer because these are gripping hands for his accessory and they should hinge up and down but these ones hinge in and out. He has some more hands that we'll be taking a look at in a moment. You saw the ab cut in there that he can do a full 360. That is the ball joint at the waist. Um, let's see if we can... Yeah, I'm afraid it's going to rip. So, yeah. Let's see if I can get that to just spin at... I'm not going to be able to without getting too much up in there and possibly ripping this, but he does have a bit of a crunch forward. He has some movement back. You can see that sticks out a little bit. He has some side to side going on. The ball joint at the waist doesn't give him a whole lot of front to back, nor does it give a whole lot of side to side. Most of it is going to be the heavy lifting up here in the ab cut, but truthfully with this on, it's a little daunting to get him to bend into things. This is kind of how this popped off when I was playing around with it, just full disclosure, that I was trying to do an ab bend and this just went pop. So yeah, I don't know how that's going to reflect on the main figure once we get it. So he does have drop down hips. Oops. He has drop down hips that they can come forward fairly well. They can go back fairly well, hindered only by this. But like I said, this is a very soft rubber that we can bring this up out of the way. They can go back. They can come out to the side fairly well. They'll come up to 90, but they're a little, that's another spot where they're a little loose and you'll see they'll just droop down. Also the weight of this will tend to wear it down. Let's roll this up out of the way again. We have double jointed knees with some decent travel to them thigh cut, but you can see that it is not, you get a little of displacement right here when you use the thigh cut. Same with the boot cut, but we have the boot cut down here, but it has a little bit of displacement, a little bit of hangover as well. Now the boots are very loose. As a matter of fact, when I was working the knee articulation, when I first got him out of the packaging, the boot almost popped off the peg on his, on his lower legs here. Ankles will rock way back. Ankles will rock way forward. Ankles have some really good side-to-side -side rocker, but the ankles are also very loose. So I don't know if that is indicative of the figure or if that, once again, is just the translucent red. And this is starting to annoy me that we may need to get some glue after all to make sure that this stays on and stays closed. That's a bummer. I understand why they didn't want to use heavy glue though. Like I said, you don't want like a big glob showing through this, this candy red translucency. You can see there's even pockets here on the sides of his coats. You could see it real well. Yeah, shining through right there. I dig the look of him. I really do. I can't wait to see him in full color. So out of the box, Dracula has the standard grip hands, which as you saw, hinge in and out instead of up and down. But he also has these clawed gripping hands, and these can hold his sword as well, and they do hinge up and down instead of in and out. That one is sticking a little right now. But you see, this one will hinge up and down. These are the only ones that he has that go up and down. And he has these open vampire attack taloned hands. Now the standard head sculpt, I don't know how well you can see the facial expression through the camera, but the standard head sculpt gives him a very human, very neutral look. And we do get another head with him, and the head does pop off, but I wanted to show you something that it's 
a little a little loose that when you try to pop the head off see the whole neck piece wants to come off and that also brings this up as well so let's pop this neck piece back on there that to get once you get this back on to get it off i kind of have to put some pressure on his chest to hold that piece down and then mm, that didn't work that time did i come mm, push it down get it to lock in because you can hear it's not really popping when you push it down and there we go and there is just a hinge joint right there and there is a ball joint where the neck is connected but you can see that it's really loose and i don't know if that's the figure if that's the translucent plastic or if that's just mine but now we have another head that we can pop on uh. There we go. And I don't know how good the detail you can see. There we go. You can see the snarling. He's burying his fangs. Once again, he has those black dots for eyes. But I can't wait to see this. You can kind of see the outline of the fangs right there. I can't wait to see this in painted form. I think that is really the only difference in the head sculpts because the hair is basically the same. The eyes, the structure is basically the same. It's just this one. He's burying his fangs and he's on the attack. So there's really only one accessory that Dracula comes with, and that is his sword. And once again, this is just made in translucent red plastic. You can kind of make out the crest that makes up the, um, the cross piece here with the bat wings and the detail on the hilt, the handle right here, the pommel piece. The pommel piece right there being a wolf's head, which is fantastic. I think that's what that is. Is that a wolf's head or is that a dragon head? No, I think that's a wolf's head right there. Although it would make sense if that was a dra Oh, no, I think that is a dragon. Yeah, I think they did go with the dragon right there. Okay, that is cool. That is real cool because then that matches the wings right there. Nice, nice guys. Real nice attention to detail right there. I like that. The sword looks really cool. I really like this. Unfortunately, there is no sheath for it, which I wish he did have. And this will fit in his hand very well, at least in his human gripping hand. That you just got to work it in there, and he has a nice tight grip on it. And he does look good holding it. This is scaled very well for him. Like, it's a little oversized. It's a hand and a half sword, but you can totally believe that someone like Vlad here would be able to whip that thing around one-handed with no problem. Now we're going to show you the um, taloned gripping hands. So here are the taloned gripping hands. Remember, these are the ones that hinge up and down instead of in and out. And once we put the sword in his hand right here, this is actually a real loose fit for Vlad. Like, the sword will almost come out that they don't close tight enough around it to give him a real secure a real secure grip on it that it kind of does wobble and flop a little in his grip and i don't know why there's one finger extended it's like these are actually trigger hands i don't know i haven't looked does dracula come with firearms in the standard monster Fo monster force release I'm not sure, but that does raise a question now, because these are definitely trigger fingers. Hmm. That would be interesting to see. But we can use them to hold the sword right now. So, I like that. So this big patch of red that looks like a blood stain right here is actually the figure stand. You can see it has a single peg right there, and it basically makes Dracula look like he's standing in a puddle of blood, which is kind of gnarly and kind of cool at the same time. Now, before we put him on here so you can see what this looks like, one thing I do want to comment on this is that he stands on his own very well. Like... You know how sometimes you get a figure and you have to like sort of tilt him one way because he has a habit of like leaning in a certain direction. Dracula right here, for the most part, every time I've stood him up, pretty much just has a straight up and down stance. And it's a very solid stance. Even though I said the ankles are a little loose on him, they're not so loose that he's not holding position. So I really like that. I really like when, a fig when you can just 
drop a figure down, whoop, and he'll stand right there on his own. So bringing in like his blood plate stand right here, you just put the peg down. He has two pegs at the back of his boots, and voila, whoop, voila, he's standing in a blood puddle. That's this is actually it's just a figure stand, but this is actually I think it would be a really cool like diorama piece for like his victims that you can just lay them down in a puddle of blood. Oh, it's gonna be so gnarly. I really dig this right here where like it's not just a stand it's like an effect piece a diorama piece i think that's really cool okay now here's the one i've been waiting for this is our omen of doom forgotten king this is the leader of the bad guys as far as i can figure out and putting the tape measure to him we can see that he is approximately six and three quarter inches tall to the top of his mask right here Looking at the Forgotten King right here, there's going to be something that stands out very much. And there is a lot, and I mean a lot of reuse between this figure and Dracula. And I don't have a problem with that. There's nothing wrong with that. This is a new line. We know they do this all the time. But to drive home how much reuse there is, let's bring Dracula in and look at them side by side. That the coats are the same, the arms are the same, the bucks are the same, the legs and the boots are all the same. Basically, the only parts that are different are the undercoat pieces right here and their head sculpts. Whereas Dracula has like a normal head sculpt, our Forgotten King has his Egyptian mask. This is a double-breasted suit with a tie and a shirt underneath. This is... I'm not exactly sure what they call this. Uh, no, this is double-breasted. This is single. I'm sorry. Button-down vest, double-breasted vest, tie and shirt ascot maybe a little gem yeah probably uh the dracula crest right there so there is if you have if you know one you'll know the other as a matter of fact we're not even going to go over articulation for the forgotten king because it is exactly the same as dracula also i don't want to try and maybe rip this coat or, or rip the glue of this coat as well. With this being a lighter color, you can definitely see the globbing of the glue better on this one than you can with Blood Prince Dracula, which is another reason I don't want to risk like peeling the glue away because if they weren't able to get it 100% clean, I know I would just completely screw this whole thing up. The only thing we're going to look at for the articulation is his mask, his head right here because of the mask. He will do the full 360, but you have to lift the chin of it. He can look up very well. Look down fairly well. Um, it does tend to get in the way, and he has some really good tilt side to side. I can't wait to get a painted color version of this mask. This mask looks freaking awesome. Look at that. I can't wait, wait, wait to get the um, painted in version of this. This is going to look great. Now, we also know that for the painted version, the complete version, we're going to get, I believe, two sets of hands. That we're going to have open human hands, and I think we're going to have wrapped mummy hands. The hands that come with our Forgotten King right here, I believe, are all just the um, human hands. We didn't get any wrapped hands with it, and that's fine. I'm actually fine with that because would we even tell that much, you know, with this figure? Now, just like with Dracula, his ankles are loose, but his ankles are actually much looser than Dracula's. As a matter of fact, sometimes I have a hard time standing him up that, like, his ankles want to sort of give out. And a couple of times he's fallen forward, and a couple of times he's fallen to the side. Now, I've seen to be able to remedy that um, recently, <laughs> but just so you know, this was much looser than Dracula was. So with that out of the way, like I said, the only difference with the uh, centerpiece here is that he has a single button-down vest. You can see collared shirt and bow tie underneath there, or not bow tie, collared shirt and necktie underneath there. But other than that, there's nothing different about this. The paint apps obviously are going to be um, doing a lot to make this all look different. So just like Dracula, out of the box, the Forgotten King comes with a pair of gripping hands. He comes with a pair of clenched fists. He comes with a pair of open spell-casting hands. And he comes with a pair of straight hands. 
So the Forgotten King does come with his Havoc staff. Oh, I'm sorry, his Pharaoh staff. And it does require some assembly, but it's not much because basically you take this headpiece and you pop it on the top of the Staff of Ra. <laughs> and then you take this glaive piece right here and you pop that on the bottom. Get on there. There we go. And there you have his staff. And I really dig the staff. I really like the look of this staff. I mean, look at this headpiece right here. This is fantastic. The skull, you have the twin serpents coming up off of the sides, the wings right here. This, once again, is going to look fantastic in painted color. I think this is going to be gold. But then when you flip this over, like I wasn't kidding, this is a glaive butt end. You can see the nicks and the chunks taken out of the blade right here. Like this is seen hundreds and hundreds of years of use. And I kind of dig this because like it isn't saying that the Forgotten King is just a sorcerer. He's also a warrior. He can throw down. He can get into the thick of it. And I think that is really cool. This is a really cool piece. This is a really cool weapon. I really like the look of it. Now it does fit into his gripping hand right here that even with one hand, he has a fairly good grip on it. It moved a little bit, but it is, you know, heavy. <laughs> I also like, I don't know if you've noticed on the staff, but I also like on the staff how like, it's not perfectly straight. Once again, you can see like there are cuts and nicks taken out of the wooden haft of the staff right here. Much like it's seen some action for hundreds and hundreds of years. I really dig that. I really like this thing. This looks really cool. And I jokingly called it the Havoc Staff, but like if this hasn't been influenced by Skeletor's Havoc Staff, I don't know what else to say. But that looks real good. He can get some decent two-handed poses out of it, which we will see. But in the moment, I want to show you something else. So the other thing I wanted to show you are these awesome, awesome magical effects we get with the Forgotten King. And we actually get two of them. I thought he was only going to have one, but we have one for each hand. And these, like, just look at the detail work on these. These look great. Being made of this translucent blue, it really gives it like this magical swirling effect. I believe the ones we're going to get with the standard Forgotten King are going to be this same translucent blue right here. And coming with him, I don't mind that it's this color, it's this translucent plastic. But if they reuse these for other members of the Monster Force or the bad guys, whoever the bad guy, whatever the name of the bad guy faction is for this one, I would love to see these done in other colors, if not maybe multiple colors of translucency. That would look really cool. Now we have the centerpiece right here for it to fit on his wrist. So let's just pop off his one gripping hand. Let's bring in a, that's the wrong size. Let's bring in an open spell casting hand. And then this fits over the wrist piece. Whoops. Like so. Right there. You can see there's a cuff. Let me show you. There's a cuff to the sleeve right here. And you just pop this over. And that helps to hold it in place. And then you just put the magic casting hand in it. And there you go. He's casting some magic. Let's get a staff up. Like, I think that is a really cool effect. I think that, and I'm not trying to like bash on Marvel, but I think that is like better than anything Marvel has come up with for the magical effects. Those look so cool. It's a little diluted right now because the entire figure is translucent blue, but I have a feeling that whenever we get these on the standard release, that's really going to pop, really going to stand out. Because I believe on the standard release, not only do we get these translucent blue effects, but we get translucent blue hands. So like his hand looks like it's part of the spell. And that's what I mean. Um, and that's what I meant at the beginning of the video when I said you could kind of use this figure as like, whoops, oh no, as like the Forgotten King is just completely going Super Saiyan and has like just gone full sorcerer and is just become the magic like that looks cool that looks so cool even just standing here like that that's not even like a great pose but i think that looks really cool right now
Before we look at the final piece, I wanted to point something out. You can see he has this two-handed grip right here. And since we didn't go over the articulation other than the head, there's something I forgot to mention, that all of the Forgotten King's wrists hinge in and out. None of them go up and down. They all come in and out. Now, the last thing to take a look at is this figure stand that he comes with, because he comes with one of his own as well. And this is really cool. I like that uh, Dracula and the Forgotten King got two different figure stands, that this is basically like a tombstone. It has the Operation Monster Force carved into it, and you can see if you set it down this way, it has two foot pegs to use it as a figure stand like that. But once again, it's a figure stand that can kind of be used as a diorama piece because you can use it for a tombstone like so. The only thing I wish is that it didn't have Operation Monster Force etched in here and that it was just more stonework. You can even see like how it's chipped around the edges right there. There is some real good attention to detail on the accessories on the figures. And these are fairly plain Jane figures because they're both basically wearing long coats and suits. But even with that, like the buttons, the collared shirt, Dracula here with his double-breasted look going on. I think there is the, the chunks taken out of the glaive down here. I think there's going to be some real good attention to detail with this whole line, because even here with the figure stand, these chunks taken out of the stone, I think looks really cool. Okay, so here's something I found out about the Forgotten King completely by accident. I was turning off all of the lights in the studio when I was done recording this, and he glows in the dark. He glows in the dark actually really well. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that when I bought him. I don't think it actually said it anywhere in the description on Big Bad Toy Store, but the Forgotten King, all of his accessories, all of his hands, including his figure stand, all glow in the dark, and that's really cool. And now it's making me wonder if the magic accessories that come with the standard Forgotten King is also going to be glow in the dark. I would suspect that they are, but I don't know if the camera is doing this guy justice, but he is a really bright blue in the darkness. And now for size comparison, here they are beside the Jada Toys Universal Monsters Bella Lugosi Dracula and the Invisible Man. Here they are beside Loose Collector's Big Bad Toy Store exclusive Vampirella and the Mezco 112 Collective Eric Draven the Crow. Here they are beside Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Python Patrol. Here they are beside the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Python Patrol Copperhead and the Cobra Trooper. Here they are beside Valiverse Action Force Pandora and Version 2 Bone Collector. Here they are beside Hasbro Marvel Legends World War II Captain America and Lady Deathstrike. Here they are beside the Metacom Mafex Batman. Uh huh, get it? Batman. And Cyborg Superman. Here they are beside Lanyard Toys City Hunter Predator and Xenomorph Drone. Here they are beside Mattel, Masters of the Universe, Masterverse, Masters of the Universe movie Skeletor, and Hasbro Power Rangers Lightning Collection. I can't remember his name. What is he? King Sphinx, I think he is. Here they are beside NECA Toys, Dungeons and Dragons, War Duke, and Grimsword. And finally, here they are beside Airborne and Me from the G.I. Joe Steel Corps. So these figures are cool. What else can I tell you? It's a reincarnated vampire lord versus a thousands of years old mummy that is basically an Egyptian lich going to war with each other. Like, you can't get much cooler than that. Now, these figures aren't going to be big game changers. The articulation is pretty much what we've come to expect from 112 figures. You even saw when I was peeling away Dracula's clothing that the buck, as far as we can tell in this translucent version, is basically the Valiverse buck. So there's nothing new here. There's nothing... Let me, let me rephrase that. Engineering-wise, there's nothing new here. There's nothing that we haven't seen. Where this line is going to sell is, quite frankly, the cool factor. Like I said, it's monsters versus monsters with a military veneer thrown over top of it. You can't get much cooler than that. Dracula on the side of the good guys leading an undead army against the undead. Like, you got a mummy. Like I said, it's basically an Egyptian lich. Like, this is a battle of the ages, and it's like Dracula teaming up with Van Helsing. 
That is what is going to sell Operation Monster Force. The unique setting, the coolness of it, and the look in the paint apps. Like, the sculpted detail, if these two are any indication, isn't going to be something that is game-changing either. It's going to be basically what we've seen from Hasbro, Mattel, Valiverse. It's just the style. Like, Dracula in this suit going to war with a sword amidst all of these, you know, army men, basically, is pretty awesome. Now, these two figures specifically have some faults to them. As I was playing around with them, as I was taking photos, the grip they have for their weapons became very, very loose to the point that sometimes I had to cheat and sort of balance the weapon. Otherwise, it was just going to slip out of their grip. Now, I'm willing to concede that that's either just mine or that is just the nature of the translucent plastic and that the standard figures will be in much better condition and will have much tighter grip on their weapons. That's what I'm hoping for, because if you have a military-themed line that can't hold their weapons, there's going to be problems there. Also, as you saw Dracula's coat, the glue started to peel away very easily, but once again, I do believe that is because they couldn't go overboard with the glue because of the translucent plastic. I, I really dig that they were able to get translucent plastic in that really soft rubber to begin with, I thought these were going to be like really hard and kind of brittle. I haven't, as I've said before, I haven't had translucent figures in a long time. They never really did anything for me, mainly because of the brittleness. These two I got just because it's Operation Monster Force and I really wanted to get my hands on them and get a preview of what they were like. And for the most part, I'm really happy with them. They don't feel brittle, but they are very soft and very gummy. And that is what led to the hands. That's what led to the glue coming undone. You even saw a few times when I was trying to swap Drax's head that the, the whole neck joint popped off when it wasn't supposed to. Also, like I said, the boot almost came off of the peg with the first time I tried to bend the knee. But amidst all of that, the hands still pop in and out very solidly and the head socket. So the stuff that is supposed to remove that's supposed to be swappable, the hands and the head all have, still have like a solid grip on them. I had fun with these figures. I really like these figures. I'm looking forward to the standard release of these figures. I'm looking forward to Monster Force coming out. Hopefully we'll start to get some towards the end of this year. Leave a comment down below. Let me know, are you going in on Operation Monster Force? What do you think of it? Does it do anything for you? Are you excited about, um, uh, Order of the Crimson Moon. I'm actually, I might be a little bit more excited about that than actually Monster Force, believe it or not. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that third line whose name I still cannot remember. Hello, before you click away, please remember to do all the YouTube things like share, comment, and subscribe. If you already did subscribe, big thanks to you. If you like the show and you want to help the channel grow, please be consider becoming a YouTube member or a monthly coffee subscriber, where for $1 a month, you can get access to member benefits, such as the monthly members exclusive video. This month, it is the Fig Zero 1 6 scale Cobra Commander. So until next time, my friends, play well, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.